Hello and welcome to today's Game City XP Boost on how to create a compelling game trailer. My name is Amanda, I work for Game City Hamburg and I will guide you today's to, through today's program. So first a short introduction on what Game City Hamburg is. Um, we aim to improve the general conditions for companies and founders in the Hamburg games industry and offer programs, events, and services in close cooperation with the games industry to strengthen local developers. As I said, our topic today is game trailers, uh, which are a vital asset for advertising a game. They can be an excellent tool to create understanding for a game and give viewers an impression of game, gameplay, mood, and setting of a game. They can also attract attention on social media and on storefronts, but to unleash a trailer's full potential, it has to be very well thought through. Today, we have two experts in this field with us, Derek Liu, Liu um, from Derek Liu Creative and Kuba Sodek from Radical Studio. So um, I will let both of them introduce themselves. So what do you do? What's your background? Why are you passionate about game trailers, Derek? Hi, my name is Derek Liu. I make game trailers. I worked on some games like Half-Life Alex, Psychonauts 2, Among Us, Firewatch, Dead Cells, Subnautica, many more. I've been doing this independently for about eight years. Uh, way back, I worked in movie trailers as an assistant. I've also worked at some agencies making game trailers. And um, I just I just love the job. It's lots of fun. I love playing games. I love trailers and editing. So it's the perfect thing. I can do it all from my office at home. And uh, I've also been writing a newsletter about game trailers for four years or so weekly, just for about, yeah, about four years, over 300 posts. I have a YouTube channel and I've streamed critiques on Twitch. I've done lots of GDC, GDC talks because there's just so much to talk about in game trailers. And I think a lot of people don't know about how to make them well. So I want to help out in any way that I can. Thank you, Kuba. What about you? Yeah, I'm Kuba Sobek. I run Radical Studio since uh, 2011. Uh, this is a company, a collective of uh, freelancers and artists uh, from um, the whole game industry. Uh, we made trailers for Layers of Fear, Observer, um, ad commercials and advertisements for um, The Witcher 3 and Cyberpunk 2077. And yeah, I'm doing this for 12 years. Uh, I love this. I love video games because this is a very young medium. And um, yeah, that's basically about me. Thank you so much. I will jump to the first question, which is very easy, but uh, to, to get everyone into the same boat. Why are tra game trailers important, Kuba? <laughs> uh, it's easy because they sell your game basically in the easiest way possible. Like you can run the whole uh, marketing machine with press releases and stuff, but still the video is the easiest way to tell people how actually you play the game and use it at the same time as a hype train for your game because it's not an instruction, it's not an overview on, of how to play, but a narrative driven story about how to play. Like that's why they are super important in my opinion. So how many different trailers would you, would you recommend for a game? Uh, so for what occasions, like an announcement, a release? Derek, would you have anything to say to that? So how many trailers you should make really depends on your game. I think that at least maybe an announced trailer and a launch trailer, well, at least one trailer, of course, but an announced trailer, if you want to, if you have an opportunity, especially to be in some sort of online showcase, like you know, E3 sort of thing, uh, wholesome games, one of those things, and a launch trailer for when the game comes out. But not all games need to have many different trailers because some games you can sum up in a trailer or two. And then by the time you start trying to make more, you're just repeating yourself. But certain games, maybe you want a story trailer because narrative is a really important part of it. Uh, other ones, maybe later on, you want to do sort of like developer commentary type trailers to explain really nitty gritty details. If it's like a RTS game or something with a lot of systems, and that makes sense there. Um, a lot of a lot of games make maybe three trailers, like announced trailer, which has the basic idea, gameplay trailer to see what the game looks like in action, and launch trailer when it comes out. 
but it really depends on the game. So I think that people should really look at their game and honestly think to themselves, okay, how many trailers can we make with this? With all these features and ideas, how much time between now and when we release and try to figure it out that way? Yeah, I would say that you need as much trailers as possible and as you need. I mean, by, by which I mean exactly what Derek said. Plus, if you are a little small indie, nobody is really interested in your game. Nobody cares about you. So you have to, you know, um, be present in the media, in whatever media you can, as often if, as you can. So sometimes the situation is like this. You have a really simple game and you can make one super cool trailer for it, but it's just like one shot and, and like two months later, nobody remembers. So you can recut it. Look, you can update the uh, footage inside of it if, if your game is early access, for example. So sometimes it's a very long run, long marathon, and you can use the same asset in many ways. So sometimes it's like even 20, 20 trailers for one game. I remember when we were working on Layers of Fear and Layers of Fear entered early access, we made the early access announcement, early access reveal date launch, and then early access gameplay trailer. And then we were making constant like 10, 10 trailers, like every two months, another trailer. So sometimes it looks like a marathon. Uh, but to me, personally, I'm a fan of one super duper video asset, uh, uh, which is well written, but that's an ideal situation. And I think that uh, it's an exception because most of the indies have to run it in a in a, in a marathon. Absolutely. And speaking of indie devs, when would you recommend the indie devs to release their first teaser or trailer? Um, when they are ready. Um, yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's that's so obvious, right? It's super obvious, but not so obvious at the same time. Uh, I many times, very often, I have those emails and those calls when people don't even have the alpha version of the game, or they have many builds for many uh, slides of the vertical slide, uh, and and I'm like, why why would do you do you would you like to watch a, a trailer about a game that is so unfinished that it has, it has gray boxes, that only uh, one rifle works in a shooter, for example, that you have only one monster? Would you like would you be invested and stuff? And then people realize that yeah, maybe let's wait. Uh, uh, so that's when ready, but there is another exception. If you are looking for investor or the, some angel fund or somebody like this, then you can make this secret trailer just to show uh, on the closed meetings. And then it makes sense that you are not ready, but you, you just show what you have plus some concepts and, yeah, and you pitch it. So yeah, but to the general audience, really when you are ready, when you have lots of uh, assets and like 75% of your core loop ready, that's when I advise, advise to show uh, the gameplay. Otherwise, uh, gameplay trailer. Otherwise, if you show it too early and uh, you have like 30% ready, you will show it, nobody cares. And two months later, even people who doesn't care, they forgot about it. And you are still two or three years for years to the launch, so it's pointless. Yeah, I think that um, also when you're ready, can you can also think of it this way. When do you have enough game to show the basic idea of the game and also a decent amount of variety so then that it looks like it has some depth to it? And also when your art style is pretty nailed down. If you're still working on the art direction, and everything's gonna change significantly in a month or two, then wait a month or two. But this question also, I would probably throw to a marketing friend of mine who can do things like make marketing timelines, work backwards from release and figure out exactly how much runway they have, that sort of thing. That's a whole other question. But um, it also, it helps to work with an editor early on just to look at the game and have them say, yes, we could make a trailer with this, or no, you probably need some more stuff in here. But like, uh, it also depends. So for example, for the announced trailer for Among Us VR, you know, it's, it's Among Us, people already know what Among Us is. So you don't have to show very much at all. You just have to know 
it's among us and in vr and that first announced trailer there was one room finished and we have the character running around and that's the whole trailer because they could do that because they're among us but most people are not among us of course so they can't get away with that oh totally agree and sometimes uh you have like mm, a tiny slice tiny piece of gameplay one location one monster etc but you also can have a lot of great concepts and a lot of great artworks. And that's that's a situation when it, which is very risky. But if you got very good artists and like two and a half D animators, you can make a two and D um, animation out of it, by which I mean this kind of 3D animations texturized by the artworks. And you can use it as a promo um, if it's high quality. And if it's streamed during some event, it might get the attention of people because of unique art look, for example. But that's a rarity, and that's another exception. Like uh, I would strongly not recommend 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 doing this unless you have unless you have this um, core loop or this part of the gameplay which is very significant. Yeah, or if you're if you're Untitled Goose Game you're fine, but that's 1% yeah. of the 1% of the 1%, yes. you know, maybe, maybe super hot where, yeah. you know, all of those trailers for super hot, you could have told me they're shot in one room because we're just mm -hmm. looking at the guns and the red enemies and the slow motion. Um, but again, really, really small percentage of games have a hook that strong that oh. they can get away with that. Totally agree. Yeah. Thank you. So you you touched a bit uh, like the next point that I, I wanted to touch, um, like a concepting a game trailer. There are different kinds of trailers, like cinematic gameplay trailers, live action, story trailer. How do the devs decide which uh, theme fits best? Um, I took a note, and and I took a like I have four factors. It's a it depends on budget, time, advancement of development, and the events coming. Like the four factors that are really important when you decide what kind of trailer uh, you want to show to the people. If you have budget and the event is coming, it's pretty obvious that you can make a pretty huge cinematic trailer and show, show it to the people before even having a rational part of gameplay. Uh, but most of us obviously doesn't have the budget. Uh, so it's time, advancement of development, and events. So gameplay trailer is still a thing I would recommend on the first place always, absolutely always. And every single, every other uh, kind of trailer, like story trailer consisting of artworks, like uh, live action trailer, um, I think it's more uh, kind of... Um, um, on the later stage, to show the later stages of, uh, of making uh, your marketing campaign. Uh, and I would strongly recommend to show the, the gameplay in the first place. But when you're ready, of course. Uh, the same goes with the cinematics, like the, with, this, with the live action trailer. When, if you have budget, uh, very rich publisher and the event is coming, or I don't know, Halloween is coming and you have Blair Witch project in your portfolio, and the Blair Witch is coming out in VR, then why not a uh, live action trailer? It makes sense because with Oculus Quest uh, 2, you can show uh, actual player moving hands, moving head, and being scared in the woods and cut between the live action trailer where, where the player is playing the game and the real gameplay, and it makes sense. But to me, like live action trailers mostly doesn't make sense at all like uh, confetti just, and, and that's it yeah and i think you can think of it in a different way rather than what kinds of trailers should you make and more in terms of what are you trying to say at this moment and so you know a live action trailer can only do certain things because it doesn't have gameplay and people aren't going to care about something like that until maybe they've seen gameplay and then this is extending that gameplay universe in a way that you can't using in-game assets like uh, Deus Ex Human Revolution released a live action trailer much later on in their campaign. You've already seen the game. So it's sort of treating this game as if, what if this is like the real world? This is what it would look like to sort of expand that universe. But, you know, indies mostly don't do that sort of thing unless maybe it's sort of a throwback Nintendo style commercial. Uh, 
I remember there was a Hotline Miami live action trailer that was pretty good, but I think that came well after many gameplay trailers. And that's just to create different mood and style, mm -hmm. or maybe you want to evoke like a certain movie genre, like Grindhouse Cinema or something like that to, to emphasize yeah. the flavor of this thing. And all of these trailers, they all do things well differently. So they're different tools for different outcomes. You have to think of what the outcome that you want. I think ideally, if you can do it through gameplay, do it through that. And if it's the only way you can possibly achieve this one thing is by CG trailer, live action trailer, then do it that way. But I think that's really rare. Yeah, like two years ago or one year ago, uh, I think everybody, most of us remember uh, that Obsidian launched this super cool CGI Outer Worlds 2 trailer. Probably they don't have any part of gameplay. They are very early. They were very early in the gameplay development back then. So they had the money and they they made a, this comedy CGI trailer about how to make a CGI trailer, uh, which was a parody. And they built a hype. Like that was the one of the best things I've seen like in a few years. And the other one, the other um, the other example you just mentioned, the Deus Ex, that was awesome too. Like it had this uh, viral potential. Uh, potential. I mean, everybody could watch this and was invested, even if it doesn't play game, right? It was about the, uh, if I remember correctly, about the um, prosthetics and some like yeah, uh, enhancements. It was dope. Yeah. Yeah, and also uh, indies sh shouldn't look to AAA trailers for inspiration because they're just operating on a totally different wavelength yeah. because how do indies get their trailers seen mostly it's through online showcases maybe if you get to one of jeff Keeley's show uh that's going to be a really big thing um but you know most things aren't going to go viral like untitled goose game but you know triple a mortal Kombat, they put out a trailer with dave Bat bautista and the, yeah. you know people screaming Mortal Kombat like in the original commercial. That's going to get played on TV in digital spots, maybe movie theaters, and that's like like super above my screen, top yeah. of the funnel marketing. Just yeah. really, really wide reach. But that's just that's not how it works in the indie level, unless you just your hook is just so so strong. But it's again mm. the exception. Yeah, totally agree. So do you have any tips on how to find inspiration for a trailer concept, Derek? Um, well, I play the game first, of course, and I look at what are the things that are unique. I mean, this is, seems like an obvious thing to say, but yeah, of course, if I'm playing a new platformer game, action platformer, I'm going to be comparing that to every single one that came before then, and then trying to figure out what are the things that are different about this. Hopefully it's something more than just the art. If there's some other, maybe there's a gameplay mechanic, something that when people see that, having played all these other games, they'll say, oh, that's different. That That's making this worth playing because the worst thing you can have is a trailer that comes out Ha touches all the key points in like like Legend of Zelda sort of game. Oh, there's a, you find a sword, you go fight monsters, you go to the village, you buy some more stuff, you go fight boss monster in, in the dungeon. There, you can make a game that has all those things, but has nothing that really feels different than just classic Legend of Zelda. And then people will just, if they're really mean, they'll say something like, oh, this is just a reskin. You know, what's the point? But you need to have something in there where that sh that one thing sort of changes the whole experience. Either it's like really great world building, which usually isn't the case. I mean, if it's like Hollow Knight, great. You know, Hollow Knight, Blasphemous, I'm, I'm playing Blasphemous 2 right now. Those mm -hmm. have like really unique settings and, um, you know, that affects the flavor of everything that you've done uh, or that, that goes into this game. But I'm, I'm always looking for, okay, what are the things that when people finish watching this trailer, they'll be able to say, did you remember seeing that game with this, this, and this in it? Or maybe just two things. You know, people are never gonna watch a trailer and say, do you remember that game which had 16 boss battles and 15 weapons and 10 environments and all, you know, all these like sort of feature bullet point things. People are never gonna repeat that sort of thing. They'll be like, oh, there's a game with a goose in it. There's a game where you, it's a Metroidvania where you play a bug. 
so I'm always looking for those really key things that can sum up the game really quickly so that I can feature them in the trailer. Yeah, uh, to be honest, I am doing exactly something which, which I should avoid, which we all should avoid because the game industry is super young. But when I'm looking for inspiration for making trailer, I'm looking to, to old uh, movies trailers. <laughs> I'm just looking for pacing, for how they build up the uh, narr narratives, how the narration is working. And maybe that's because the first games I was working were horrors. It was Layers of Fear and it was heavily classic horror inspired. So what I did then, back then, I rewatched all the trailers from Evil Dead to The Exorcist. And I was thinking how to take this uh, to the gaming world. And yeah, I, I think I, I stole some ideas in some of the trailers back then. And uh, from nowadays perspective, I think that was half success because um, those kinds of narratives doesn't accept, doesn't work very well with video games, well, at least not always, especially when you have first person perspective horror, uh, it's much harder to, to take some uh, movie techniques and include them in the first person perspective game where you don't have other ac actors, for example. But yeah, that's not even now, even today, I'm looking to old movies, uh, watching some old trailers, and that's the first step. And then, of course, I'm playing a game and I'm not taking notes what I think, and the rest is exactly as uh, Derek said. No bullet points, like no 60 weapons, no, no, no 100 monsters. We are searching for something that makes this game totally unique. And if the game is not totally unique, then it's the game is problem, not the marketing campaign. And yeah, it's, it's, yeah. So we are going to the core. I remember that one time I was working on a trailer for the uh, JRPG inspired RPG made by Europeans. And they had this very different kind of dwarves in this game. I don't remember how different, what was the difference, but they were very special to me. And I was like, guys, let's make them, let's put them on the on the front of the trailer. This I haven't seen something like this and blah, blah, blah. And they were like, no, it's not what this game is about. I mean, yeah, but you are copying the JRPG and in the end, we're gonna end up with a trailer that is looking like a JRPG, but it isn't, kind of. And yeah, that that's the problems, that's the discussions I think all of us have when we are talking to devs about the, their video games and uh, USPs and where to focus on if the game isn't unique at all and you still have to make this trailer. Uh, that's a heavy road. And that's when I'm, I'm looking for uh, some different music, for example, for a trailer or some very known music, um, or some, something, whatever, that brings me something unique, uh, which isn't in the game, to be honest. So the soundtrack, for example, is something which is very helpful sometimes. I'll also sometimes go to, if it's a, if it's a game that's a sequel or a game that's similar to other genres, then I will look in like Steam forums or YouTube comments and see what people have said about like the previous game and sometimes people just speculate out loud saying like oh man if there's a sequel to this game mm -hmm. it'd be so cool if they just put this in and sometimes that thing's in the game's like okay people will care about this so i'll put this in the trailer and they'll be like oh my god they put the thing in so that works sometimes one uh we just talking about movie, movie trailer inspiration i do that sometimes like i did where um a trailer for stray gods recently which is it's a role-playing musical game so i looked at lots of trailers for musicals in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. But to be honest, most of them try to hide the fact it's a musical in those mm -hmm. trailers. You look at the trailer for La La Land and Greatest Showman, yeah. you don't you don't know it's a musical yeah. unless you see the dancing. Uh, yeah. And even, it's it's very rare. So, I, but I still looked to see what were the techniques to try to transition from this song to this song to that one. Cause it's really hard to do when you have song lyrics and all the songs have a different feel. Um, one example of just direct inspiration for the Psychonauts 2 story trailer I made, I cribbed off of the story structure for the movie trailer for Crank, the Jason Statham mm -hmm. movie. In mm -hmm. the very beginning, he says, like, my name is Chev Chelios. Today's the mm -hmm. day that I die. And at the very end, he's like, my name is Chev Chelios. Today's the day. And so the Psychonauts trailer is like, 
my name is Raz, and this is my first day on the job. And it ends, this, my name is Raz, this cool. is my first day on the job, which has like different context after seeing everything that he went through in the whole trailer. And that, that one I kept in my back pocket for, I don't know, how long has it been since Crank? Like 20 years or something. Yeah, there, there are some ideas that we just seen somewhere and we're just waiting eagerly to use them one day, right? Like, especially from the movies and movie trailers. To me, it's uh, King Arthur by Guy Ritchie. It has one, this, this one wonderfully paced trailer when uh, one person is telling the story to another, to the other one. Like, and so what, what, did you what, did you, what did you do then? Uh, I was running, I was running away because I stole something and the music is like, doo -doo 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 -doo. there's great pacing and I'm waiting for a day when I, when I can finally include that in one of my trailers uh, because this is something I would really like to do. And um, about making like 10th trailer, like you said, making a trailer for a sequel and what about making a 10th trailer for the same game, especially when the game is in the early access and then it's going the, uh, through, through the rest of the levels of the steps in the uh, campaign, marketing campaign and development. Usually what we do is if the game is grim, like for example, Chernobylite, which, which is a first person perspective uh, survival exploration game with kind of RPG edition, we made some very grim trailers for it. And during the launch, during the console launch, uh, we may, we we took some very um, happy song, and we making it on this on the on the contrary, like the the song was kind of happy. The trailer ended with uh, the death of the heroes, but then then there was a, was a rewind. We started all over again, and we are happy again another day, and it worked very well for us. It was kind of requiem after all those grimy uh, trailers, so. Uh, and I think it was more like commercial. I mean, the wider audience would uh, like to watch this kind of trailer after all. I, I mean, it's what you, it, it reaches much wider audience when you kind of try to do something else, like like a twist, like a narrative twist or, or this mu music twist or soundtrack twist. I don't know how to call it. Well, basically, you mentioned it's extremely important that a game has an USP. If it doesn't have a real standing out USP, you cannot also make a trailer out of it uh, if you don't use any other resources. But how long should a trailer be? Like, is there a minimum or a maximum length? I, th I think it should be generally between 60 and 90 seconds. If you don't have enough game to even have that much footage and have it be consistently interesting, then just make it shorter. You know, don't think, oh no, my trailer only, my game only has enough to support 30 seconds of interesting gameplay. People think this is a short game or this is a bad game or something like that. People aren't really going to think that way. They're just probably thinking, cool, short trailer, respected my time. Whereas if you have a 90 second trailer or 60 second trailer and it gets really repetitive by the 20th mm -hmm. second, then people just feel like this game is really small, doesn't really have a whole lot of scope. Um, and yep. then, you, you know, anytime you're pushing above 90 seconds, you're, you're just pushing your luck because generally game trailers top out at that. And you're just asking for that much more of a person's time. And if, you know, people might just hesitate looking at the thumbnail saying, oh, two and a half minutes for a game trailer. Mm -hmm. And they're, look, they're looking at the art. They're like, mm, yeah, maybe like you think of it this way. If you're going to a stand up comedy show and it's uh you know someone that you heard of it's going to be two hours or 60 minutes great if you go up and on the marquee is somebody you've never heard of you're like mm. but it's just like three minutes like okay maybe three minutes mm -hmm. yeah i agree but there's again there are some exceptions um the complicated games just those super complicated games yeah we can show them in 60 seconds uh, but that's gonna be not even a glimpse of what they offer and it's super hard here to sell all the USPs of uh, ground strategy game. Or lately we had this uh, exceptional Witchfire trailer. Uh, it was early access launch trailer and developer decided to uh, make something like Rockstar does with the launch trailer. So long, very long narrative driven trailer where uh, the narrator tells actually what you can do in that game. And I was like, yeah, let's do it because it's 
first person shooter souls like roguelike game uh with a lot of story with a lot of exploration and etc cetera, etc cetera. and it, it has lots lots of uh, shooting and and spells mechanics so i was like yeah just let's write it the developer wrote a seven minutes long trailer and i think it works but is it still a trailer i don't think so but we called it a gameplay overview and yeah it, it was uh part of the launch and um so people will understand that this game is much more complicated than just a simple shooter and it's not a roguelike it's not a souls like it's something like this and much more and uh to be honest and i'm watching it and i really liked what we did but still is it still a gameplay a trailer i mean it's it's still, i don't think so i mean it is it isn't a trail it's a story about how you play this game right yeah and also coming back to making multiple trailers you can make the first trailer short and snappy and really about this one idea and then make longer trailers for the people who are invested by that one and now they want some more so one example yeah. I worked on this game Shadow Game but the Cursed Crew, which is like the stealth tactical game. And when they announced the, the game, they came out with a CG trailer. But on the same day, we decided to release a gameplay trailer that was really oh. developer heavy commentary. So it was a CG trailer that was maybe 90 seconds. And then this really beefy trailer that's about seven minutes long. So that because we knew that it's very frustrating when a CG trailer comes out and you have to wait another six months to see actual gameplay yes. so we thought okay we'll we'll meet that frustration with actual gameplay so that the very end of the cg trailer says okay watch gameplay right now and mm -hmm. go see what if you like this idea or this world and then give them this really nice chunk yeah i would strongly recommend if you have strategy game or rpg game and you are indie and you want to you know get to the audience yeah do exactly as derek said if you want to show like the short gameplay trailer during the event because you have this amount of money then at the same day show people how to play this game in a bigger chunk uh yeah and that's a very good uh, practice i mean we did this a few times uh with quent cd project i decided to make a cgi trailer and the companion to the cgi trailer there was always a gameplay trailer yes yeah and i think it's a very good practice so after you decided on a concept, do you use storyboards in your work process? I see head shaking your cool no, side. I don't I so I'll usually what I have is the first cut is Mimi music, either temp track or something from the game. And then I just write out in text little title cards, you know, this thing happens and then this thing happens because I'm trying to plot out the gameplay ideas or the gameplay loop. So I want is what's what happens is more important. Uh, and what how it's framed can come later on, you know, whether it's going to be in game camera or I'm going to change the camera using the debug options. The only time I'll storyboard is if it's something that involves other people to make it happen. So, for example, the Among Us VR trailers that I made, they're more like short films because everyone already knows how Among Us is played. So I needed to have some storyboards for both me and for other people to know, okay, we're going to frame this this way. These people need to be positioned in that sort of way. But when I'm just working by myself, it's usually not necessary because I'm just editing here and then I turn over to my computer here and capture it and just try to figure out a bunch of angles in the moment and sort of discover what feels best and then i'll adjust as things go along like maybe this shot cuts better to this shot if the movement moves this way in this one and that way in the other one or uh you know the eye trace you know follows this direction and i'll just recapture it and do it again but i don't usually storyboard yeah i think we had this conversation somewhere with derek uh because sometimes i'm asked about storyboards for gameplay trailer and I always make these big eyes like what for and how would I even process that like I, I I can play the game but I just don't know everything about this game I don't know everything about the debug right now and I'm I'm not in position to, to storyboard anything uh, because there is lots of possibilities the camera angles the debug and you can do anything and even when we work uh, in a team at Radical, we don't storyboard either. And uh, but Derek mentioned one ex one exception when you work, like with the devs, for example. 
and the devs can make something uh, within the game repository. Then sometimes I sketch. I don't like to sketch because I can't sketch. But sometimes I make these little tiny people and you know the arrows and this goes from here to there. And I'm just sending this over and it works pretty well then. But I think that's the only exception. Of course, like making uh, Unreal based cinematic trailers, that's a different story because basically we start from the storyboard or we storyboard um, our trailer within the repository with gray people, gray boxes and stuff. But it's something totally different. Gameplay trailers, I don't know. I don't know if I, I don't know anybody who makes uh, storyboards for gameplay trailers. And if I knew or, or if you know guys who makes that, I, I would like to meet that person because this is something really interesting. How do you really process that and how do you really work? And I'm, I'm serious because that's that might be something totally new. Yeah. I'll sometimes do mock up trailers, like again, for Among mm -hmm. Us. Um, I, Early on, we did this sort of keynote speech style thing to announce just a whole bunch of stuff. And they had this idea where the crewmates were gonna talk, but I thought, hmm, maybe, I, th I thought it'd be weird if the Among Us crewmates talked. So I, I proposed an idea that's more silent film style. And I just filmed myself on my iPhone uh, in my office. And sometimes I split screen and play all the different characters and do it that way. Um, a lot of it's just for my own fun, but it, it, does, it does actually help. And it also amuses the developers when I send them those cuts and the, they always threaten to release them as the official trailers too, which is, they haven't called me on yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've seen them. I've seen those because I probably just shared them on LinkedIn or, or, or Twitter or whatever, but yeah, I appreciate that very much. I think that just did something like this like twice too. And it's always lots of fun, super helpful. And nowadays, basically, it's a very good tip for for game devs. If if game devs want to make a trailer on their own and and they want to stage some shots, they can do the same exactly. I think that's a very good tip. It's super easy to be to be done. So for the game devs, if they want to do their first trailer ever, are there any common basic structures that they can actually lean on to? Uh, famous cold open <laughs> but by which i mean uh some like five seconds long um, uh hyping part of the trailer before the uh before the trailer and i think we stole that from the movie industry i don't know if yeah i recognize um and uh and the ratings of course <laughs> that some tend and ends late uh that's the basic structure but um to be honest the the sooner you show the actual gameplay and the best of the best gameplay you have, the better. That's my only advice. When you write your trailer on, you try to structureize it into a trailer. There, of course, there are many things like cliffhanger, hyping and title cards and stuff. But yeah, I mean, gameplay is, is king, right? Yeah. Um, not, I think not all trailers need a cold open, but it can be good to increase ret retention because otherwise the movie trailer industry wouldn't have a trailer before their trailer. Um, but the general structure that I always encourage people to well, have a few different ones. So first one is at the very beginning, sorry, I'm a cat. Here we go. At the very beginning, you need to establish the genre space, which, yes. you know, if you, have, if you have a camera that's moving through the environment slowly and showing how cool the environments look, you know, great for the environment artists, but really bad for people who are watching the trailer trying to figure out what kind of game it is. So the first shots, yeah. ideally the first shot should establish the genre in some way. And then after that, and probably most of the trailer should be the hook of this game. What makes this game different? And then like the very end, maybe you can put bullet points and features and content. So like, I, I always tell people if you're going to have a section that shows character customization don't put it at the beginning put it at the end if you put it at all at least wait until about half the trailer because you can't care that you can customize the the characters until you care about what the actual gameplay is so it doesn't make sense to put at the beginning when people are still trying to figure out what your game is at all um, the other way to think about the structure is just think about the questions that people have when they're watching a trailer. So first they wanna know what genre it is generally. What genre is it? Okay, 
now what makes this game different and then after that like why is that interesting because just because something's different doesn't mean it's going to be interesting and then after that you want to tell them you know how does that twist and evolve in ways that keeps the game inter interesting and then things like content and customization those i think of those as like multipliers so if you're already invested in the things at the beginning of the trailer then knowing that there are you know all these different biomes or these different weapons you can use that tells you that everything every one of these custom objects changes everything we just told you like oh you can play this game with only a spear or only um i don't know uh daggers or something like that but we can't care about that until we understand the, the basics of the game yeah just if you're a game dev indie game dev keep in mind that when people are scrolling and surfing the vendor stores like the microsoft store or psn or steam pages and they are not particularly looking for a particular game but they're just scrolling searching because they played one game which they which they liked very much and now they are looking for something similar so they are exploring the similar game like this and then they stumble across your game and they see this beautiful little um, uh, graphic art uh, that represents your game uh, and they are like yeah let's watch the trailer and you are starting with 30 seconds long 2d animation asset about which tells the story of the world of the game don't do it. Do exactly what Derek told you. Genre and hook. It's it's what people are interested when they are watching your game in the stores. And you have like 10 seconds. And if you will not show them how do you actually play this game and what this game is about, they will just rage quit from your page and choose another game. That's usually what people do. Um, people are not interested in your game. They are not invested. They don't care. They don't want, want to watch those uh, long stories about how the world came to the end and now you are a hero and stuff, and what, etc. They want to see the knight with a sword and how you slash enemies. Like, I mean, there are more complicated games than this, but this is just an example. And this is exactly what you do, genre and the hook. And, and then from there, you can, from then you can go further and explore other ways. Uh, 10 seconds. Or even less, I don't know. Like people are a little less focused right now. Also, don't put your logos at the beginning, especially uh, if you have a really long animation. No one cares. No one cares. <laughs> no one right. knows who you are. No one cares. Put at the very end slate. If you want, what I like to do is I have a cold open logos like that, like like one mm -hmm. second each, and then move on to the next thing. Or have the logos superimposed on the gameplay in some interesting way. But just don't just don't do that. Because yeah. They, they don't care you're wasting their time and just swallow your pride i mean even super giant games you know hades their sequels they didn't start i think a lot of times they don't start with super giant games they start with from the creators of bastion the creators mm -hmm. of transistor and then like i think the hades trailer is like from the creators of you know bastion and transistor super giant games at the bottom they, they even put their logos seconds to just their previous games which they're super giant games, doesn't get much bigger than that in the indie space. I always say, if you are not Blizzard and some other like Rockstar, don't make, don't do it. Don't put your log in, that's it. That's the simplest rule. But still people do it anyway. So, yeah, yeah. You, you need a really good track record before yeah. people will see your logo and go like, Arr! you know, like I was at the PlayStation Experience when they debuted uh, The Last of Us Part Two. And I mean, it wasn't even the the studio logo. It was the Fireflies logo on the painted on the the traffic sign, and everyone goes, "Oh my god!" Yeah. And then after that fades out. Of course, everyone already knows it's Naughty Dog, but they still they put Naughty Dog just to confirm they're yeah. Naughty Dog. Yeah. <laughs> but that's that's Naughty Dog. Totally agree. So. What about other text and trailers? Is it a yes? Is it a no? Is it like, what would you say? How much text should people put in their trailers? I think usually the minimal. I mean, I'm against text. I mean, try to show a game with just a pure gameplay and edit it the way that you would like to watch it as a movie, kind of movie, kind of short, short movie. But it's super, it's, uh, it's super hard with most of the games. So we add layers like VO, which is text too. 
like the uh, dialogues, like the text boxes from the game to, you know, to, to show something important. And in the end, we add these title cards, which to be honest, I don't like, but I think that people doesn't have the span uh, of attention big enough nowadays that they need the constant redundancy. So if you are not sure when you edited your trailer on your own that you sell the core loop and the USPs, just make a redundancy and add these total title cards. Just don't make it uh, 60 weapons. Try to be mm, short and descriptive about the hook of your game, perhaps if you if you are not sure if people will understand it from the pure gameplay. That, that would be my advice. So minimal text, but it's super hard. So add some layers and check it out how it works. Consult yeah. it with Derek. I, I think text is a very brute force way to explain a game. And if you can do it without it, that's great. I mean, the, the downside of not having text is it makes the trailer less accessible, but because it, have, it reduces the cognitive load if you have actually explain something. But a lot of trailers, uh, I think that they can speak for themselves. But if there's certain things that you really, really, really need to make sure that people absolutely know about your game, put that in text. So for example, I did a trailer for Heaven's Vault where you, you're deciphering a language that you're discovering across the universe. And that was really important. And it's really hard to explain through the footage of seeing these symbols being moved around. So we say in one title card, decipher a lost language because we didn't want it. We want to make sure people yeah. absolutely knew that this was about deciphering a language. Um, the other thing is that, um, you know, text, the, the way I think of text is that it's sort of, the will of the marketers and trailer producers being imposed on this trailer. You know, this is us coming and saying, hey, our game is cool, or in this game you do this thing. Yeah. And if we don't have something interesting to say, then it's really doesn't help the trailer out. Because the way I liken it to is if, imagine I'm at a convention, I'm running the booth, there's a TV behind me playing gameplay, and I'm running the booth saying, check out our game. It's this game where this thing happens and XYZ. And meanwhile, everyone's like, I'm just trying to see the gameplay. You know, mm -hmm. stop bothering me. Um, but the other time to have text is when you have like really, really good messaging, like a really good slogan or something. So a great example is the skate story trailer. The the text in that one is very stylized too. And it says, you are a demon made of glass and pain. Yes. Like if your text is your hook and that's a repeatable thing, like do you check out that skateboarding game where you're a demon made of glass and pain? then that's, that's when you should have your text on screen, when that's something like unique, that when people hear that text or see that text, that's your game, no one else's game. Yeah. Personally, I like very much the trailer, and that was one of my top five picks from last year, I suppose. And I'm just wondering why they didn't add, like, the O instead the text, like, you are the demon of glass and pain. It would be more like a you feel the climate and in the mood maybe um so yeah so we, they wouldn't have to use the the text like the written text right that's the, that's my only dis like disadvantage of this of that trailer i like it very much but i'm not sure if i like it very much because it's so different skate game or it was such a good trailer i'm not sure to this day <laughs> to be honest yeah i mean having text in your trailer i think is one of the easiest way to, ways to make a game trailer because you are just telling people what they're about to see, which means that your game capture doesn't have to be as good because you're setting up what they're about to see. Whereas yeah. if you're only showing gameplay footage, you have to make sure it's really crystal clear and understandable. And there aren't any extra sort of things going on aside from the primary thing that you want people to see. So it is like the harder thing to do, but if yeah. you can try to do it without text first and then show it to people and ask them did you understand what's going on do you understand what the this game is all about how you play it and if you can't do it without text then put in text yeah exactly we're going back to the basics where the gameplay is king and properly grabbed gameplay content is the best way to depict your game and you really have to you know take everything you can from your gameplay to make it crystal clear exactly as Derek said uh, otherwise you have to Added the voiceover, the title cards, uh, 
from I don't know stock music, animations like and redundancy, 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 and sometimes it's just about making those ten shots perfect, clear, and that's it. So oh, earlier you talked about music and triggers, um, and you also mentioned that if you don't, yeah, if you don't have an USP in a game, you use you also use music from elsewhere. But would you say that in a trailer, part of the soundtrack is better, or an individually composed song for especially for the trailer? I think if you can get someone to compose a song, then do that because then they can custom time things and. Uh, you know, change, have the dramatic arc perfectly fit your gameplay. Um, something I usually do is take a track from the game and then if the composer is available, have them modify it if it doesn't have an ending, which is very typical for game music to be that way because it's just designed to loop forever, maybe dynamically transition to this other music track. Um, and, you know, it already has the flavor of the game there, but a lot of times it doesn't have the same dramatic needs that a trailer has. So, um, if it's always good to have a composer who will do something actually like really custom that still has that flavor. It's, you can go for stock music companies to do trailer music or to find trailer music, but it's, it's a really exhausting process to search through everything because you're trying to find something that has the right energy, but also fits the vibe of your game. And if you come out with a trailer that the music is just sort of generically epic, then that really robs your game of any possibilities of expressing its identity. Um, I think you see this a lot in AAA games where you have like fantasy worlds game and then it's hip hop music. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if this game this fits this world. It sounds, it seems like they didn't know what to do. So they just went with the sort of accepted mainstream thing that has lots of energy. And it just, sometimes it's just weird mm -hmm. and it's just a missed opportunity and just weakens the whole uh, whole trailer. But, you know, really good music is like a cheat sheet for an editor. Like if, if I have a really good music track, then the, the cuts just fall into place because there's certain beats and things like that that I want to cut to or cut actions to. It's like a, it's like a roadmap almost. And if it, you know, sums up the tone and the vibe and genre even, then it just, just does everything. Yeah, Dev's, Dev's always asking, can we use our music in the trailer? And I'm always, yes, but your music probably won't work uh, with 90 seconds long video. It works like 40 hours of playing because trailer is like very quick ups and downs and then to the end. Uh, so you have to either remix it or write a custom uh, track, but there is a catch. Uh, and it's always time. Uh, I always, I always welcome custom-made soundtracks uh, by the uh, in-game authors or outsource authors. But on the other hand, sometimes deadlines are super tight, and we can deliver the edited, the edit log very, uh, very far, very no, very close to the final deadline, and that leaves composer with like four or five days to compose something. Sometimes. So we found out that uh, we work on the fly. I mean, we edit prototype, which lasts like for two minutes, and we are pretty sure that we will short it to, to, to 60 seconds or 90 seconds. But we are giving this to the, uh, the, the composer uh, with the custom, with the uh, stock music, which uh, the stock music uh, depicts our pacing and tempo and BPM for the trailer. And we give that to the to the composer and he composes on the fly. The disadvantage of this solution is that the composer has sometimes twice to work to do, but his music will very well fit in the edit in the end. And uh, if composer agrees to work in that system on the fly, uh, we always come up with something great. And the other solution which leaves uh, composer with five or even sometimes three days to compose it's, I think, more painful than, than the longer run, but you have to do something twice and polish it more. Uh, stock music, uh, if you don't have your own music yet, uh, or maybe you don't have music at all in your game, or your compositions really are very not trailerish, 
And stock music isn't that bad, but you have to really search carefully because most of it is super hyping, energetic tracks uh, with a lot of brams and a lot of this, I don't know, these beats running faster and faster in the end uh, and building the tension that is not really visible in your trailer. So then you are this, you have this, you know, this cognitive problem that the one you see, the other you hear. So you have to be really careful. And the best way uh, to solve the problem is to consult with uh, marketing consultants. Uh, you don't have to have a great budget to consult some people from who market games and they will tell you if the music is okay or not, or even maybe they will help you in searching for something better. Uh, if you are not sure if the music fits your trailer, uh, don't publish it unless you are consulted first with somebody, because in the end you can end up with the fantasy game with hip hop song and something what I see uh, that, you know, it would work well with maybe triple A game by major publisher, because they would do this mix and, and it would work, but not for the indie, like 2D RPG game. Yeah. Um, so yeah, custom music is the best way. The other way is to remix existing in-game music into kind of sound trailer, trailerish music. And the third way is the stock music. And the custom is always the best, I think. Yeah, and if you're ever unsure if your music is good for the trailer, then try this. You just start playing the music and then start skipping around to the different parts of the track and see, does the energy feel different here? If it's no for it's like the beginning, middle and end or anywhere out of order, then it's probably not gonna work because just yeah. monotonous beginning to end. Um, and that will make your trailer then feel monotonous unless like maybe it's very sound design driven and having a like a drone sort of adds to the atmosphere, but usually that's not the case for right. the trailers that you're making. So for closing a trailer, what are good ways of ending the video? Should there be a call to action? Wishlist on Steam. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Keep it simple. Don't yeah. put all your social media icons there. And if you're, if give people one thing to do, the more things that you tell people to do at the end of the trailer, the less likely it is that they're going to do it. So keep, have the most important thing there, which if it's coming out on Steam is probably wishlist on Steam. And, you know, if maybe join your mailing list, if you don't have a Steam page yet, but you should have a Steam page up if you're coming out on Steam and your trailer's coming out. If you come out with an announced trailer, it goes viral, there's no Steam page for people to go to, then, you know, how many people do you think are going to come back and wishlist it after you release another trailer or post on Twitter or something like that? Yeah, personally, I'm a fan of uh, adding a um, post and end slates uh, scene, which will tease a feature that is not uh, in the trailer because it's not ready <laughs> mostly. So we tease some some feature that is coming and probably it will, it will come in the next trailer. And but yeah, that's it. Like totally agree, Derek, to, about the rest. And to be honest. Um, all this uh, end slate thing is more a question to the actual marketing people uh, who just you know position your game later. Uh, we call them uh, wise people always. And if if we don't know what to do, we just let's call wise people. They will know. And yeah. So thank you so much. They were they were these were all the questions for concepting a game trailer. Now we go uh go up for some insights into the process. Mm. So when you receive the task of creating a new trailer, what are your first steps? Can you give a rough description of the full process from beginning to the end? So, so um, oh, yeah, I just wanted to say that both of us probably have a different approach, and and that's it. Yeah. The, I mean, you know, talk to the marketing people, talk to the developers, find out what's important, play the game as much as you can. And I capture the whole thing uh, as much as I can. So then I have this one big long playthrough and then I go through and I just break it all down by like different player verbs and the different environments and basically categorize the entire thing. So then that I know this game inside and out at least through the footage. And then from there, usually from sorting things, I come up with 
uh, some like loose structure and I try to think about like the gameplay loop. So, okay, so then we have the version which I mentioned before, which has music and title cards explaining what's going to happen in each of those moments. And then I'll take footage from that first pass, which was not captured with, you know, actually composition in mind, just trying to get ideas on the, the timeline. I'll just put those things in roughly. And after that, that's when I realized, oh, wait, this animation takes this much time to play out. So I need, it needs more time here. Or maybe I forgot to put in this environment, even though I put in all these other things. And I'll go back and forth with the developers, um, see like, hey, am I missing anything? Um, or is there anything in there that you don't want in there? And then we'll just refine this as it goes along. So I'll recapture everything once I know exactly what's going to happen, you know, with which enemies or which items are involved. So I capture it for like ideal composition and for the editing and, um, you know, sound design comes in at some point here where um, maybe I'll clean up the sound design because a lot of times games are really confusing with lots of different elements. So I'll make sure that only the most important sound effects are in there. Um, and then if there's voiceover, then, you know, we have to add in voiceover, which I'll temp in myself um, and then get the official recording. And then, you know, music, music editing is in there somewhere, talking to the composer, sending them a really early version so they can start figuring out ideas. Um, and then just like a game, it gets less and less ugly as it goes along. Um, and then at the very end, you spend way too much time versioning the whole trailer for all the different end slates and logos and legal lines and then you re-export it like five times because because you're as you're watching all the versions you're finding all these little mistakes oh crap uh, i don't have to no i have to fix it and then you re-export the whole thing again and yes. then uh then they tell you that hopefully that submission worked uh and then then you uh go get a good meal <laughs> then you're a free free man again right and the thing is that even when like 20 people watch the same trailer and the version trailer many, many times, we still find uh, a box in the end, which is like impossible. Like 20 people watch the, the same trailer and after we are publishing it, there is like a freeze frame or just those two, two pixels of little black in the corner. I don't know what, how this happened, but uh, to the, let's go to the beginning, uh, please, Dear devs, please provide all the information you have because sometimes it's super hard to get info from the devs. I mean, give us game design, do please give us marketing pitch, give us like um, dialogue lines in the form of the Excel or whatever you have. Uh, give us the soundtrack, please give us the sound design effects you, what you have. And many times the question is, okay, do you need them all or can we just, can you be spe more specific? And I'm like, yeah, I can, but I still don't know your game. So I don't know what we're going to really use. And we have really big hard drives to, to store it. So please give us all because this is kind of meal for us. This is the feed we are putting in our, uh, in us to make the best trailer possible. And it might be super obvious, but not, uh, it's not always possible to get every, everything we need, even if those people, if, even if those things really exist, like, I need a game design doc because I just want to find out what's in the game even before I play it. Uh, that's like my way. To, and it's super hard to get it sometimes. Um, the other thing is build. Um, do you need build? Yes, please. I need hacks, cheats. Uh, I need uh, like Im immediate, uh, um, immediate uh, access to every single level you have in this game. I need to level up very fast if it's RPG and et cetera, et cetera. And it's not always given. Uh, it's not always available and it's not always possible because of the tight deadlines, for example, or the game is in the very, in the very alpha stage and the devs are between publishing trailer and making the game and this team is super tiny. There's a lot of factors that, uh, the basic, very basic factors that, uh, factor your game in the end, like they're super important. I mean, the tra game trailer. And um, please give us the build, please give us all the necessary information. Because from there, we just can play the game, sit down and do everything step by step, exactly what how they describe it. Uh, but every editor has 
little different approach, but basically it's more or less like this. And, um, and yeah, that's, that's the basics are the foundations, again, the gameplay. Um, and don't be scared because sometimes editors uh, bring the very early prototype edit to you and, and game devs are starting to be scared that their game doesn't look good. But as Derek said, on the one hand, the edit is ugly because it's the first edit, which is external to show you, but the next will be better and better. And sometimes the game is ugly because, for example, in a week or two, we will get better lighting. So we have to recapture all the scenes. So don't worry, it will get better. And if you are not sure that you will deliver the better content for the trailer in the next two weeks, then maybe you have to push the trailer. And that's a decision which is not always very obvious. Sometimes devs are pushing for a specific date, even if the game shouldn't be shown yet. And we have these discussions sometimes. And I, I don't really get it. Sometimes it's better to wait. And I think that we just started from it, show the game when it's ready, right? Or at least in, when it's ready to show. Yeah. I also forgot to mention, sometimes in that process, I will ask for additional debug options if the resources are available. Um, if not, then I'll work with what I have. It's really good for me to know that early on also just to know how difficult is this game to going to be to capture for. If I'm going to have to replay this whole section of this level just to get back to this section every single time I want to get a retake, that could be just hours of time mm -hmm. that is alleviated if I just have this one ability to just like teleport over there. Yes. Um, actually, going even further back, when you're emailing us, give us your game pitch. Send us mm -hmm. some screenshots, some video. I've had so many emails saying, hey, are you available for a trailer? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't want to email you back. You're giving me work now. So yeah. give, give me a bill, give me a key, you know, at least yeah. screenshots or video or website or something like that. So then that I can gauge my interest because I don't want to have to do more email and no one wants to do more email. Yeah. So, so do that. Yeah. Just please be specific too. Like uh, you accept being specific from us. So please be specific too. And uh, because this shortens the process in the end. And everybody's much happier in the end. So we talk a lot about gameplay. Um, how much is usually real gameplay and how much is staged? And how to stage gameplay without viewers noticing, Derek? It's all fake. <laughs> it is, that's a qualified answer. I mean, you know, you don't play the game the same way when you're capturing footage for it than when you're just playing the game naturally. If you ever see someone play, sorry, my cat's in the background. Um, if you see someone playing first person shooter game with a mouse and keyboard, the, the, you know, the camera's moving everywhere. So, cause everything you're trying to do in the game trailer, it's performative. I mean, like I have my game pad here. I have these little, these little things that go on these sticks. Yes. So they move like le less quickly when I'm moving the stick around. So the camera movements are smoother. So it's all it's all fake in that way. But even if I'm trying to create a situation where a character dies, you know, that's choreographed to look like, oh, I messed up and got killed, which I mean, I'm not that good at games. So it's probably not that hard to, to stage. But maybe I wanted like the body to fall in a very particular way. So like the trailer I did for Noita, there is a shot at the beginning where I had to fire this explosive wand into the ground and I wanted the body to fall a certain way. And they had to do that multiple different times because the physics are what determined which direction it went to. Um, but by and large, I capture all the footage by myself because I think that's what people are paying for also because why hire a trailer editor and then do all the hard part yourself, which to me arguably is, is capture. For me, editing is pretty easy because I'm, you know, I've been using Premiere for so long in editing, but capture is always difficult in some different way. So, you know, developers, if they're like super duper experts at their game, then it makes sense. Like I did the announced trailer. I worked on the announced trailer for Sifu, which if I had to do the capture for that game, we'd probably still be capturing for it because I'm not really good at those sorts of games with all those combos and, you know, the, all the unpredictability in there. So they did that footage, but usually I capture it by myself. 
Yeah, we capture in-house mostly. We have a dedicated team of consisting of Magda and Gabriel uh, at Radical, and they do most of the game capture. But uh, most of the editors at Radical are capturing by themselves too, because sometimes they need to, they want to. But I have to admit that this, I think the most hated part of the process is super hard to uh, to get what you want sometimes, even with debugs. When the physics is uh, super cool uh, in a game, then you stumble across the situations exactly as Derek described, where you want to achieve this one setup when something blows and the bodies are falling perfectly, as you imagine, and then like they are going away or, or whatever. And yeah, and exactly, uh, there is a usually a problem. Devs ask us, uh, can we uh, grab the footage? And I'm like, yeah, but how how much for it? I mean, this and this. Okay, so maybe we will grab it in house in the as a game devs. And I'm like, if you if you can, if you know how to, then yeah. But usually it ends up with the mouse and keyboard game grabbing, which is like depicting how the player plays. I mean, which is actually how the player plays, not depicting how the player should play in a trailer. And uh, and I think I, I we worked with the guys behind the Rift Breaker, which is a real-time strategy RPG shooter top-down game. And they made it on their own with their own engine. And those guys know, knew perfectly what they want. They want this kind of trailer. They have the list of shots. They will provide it. You just guys, you just edit it, and they did it perfectly. Like they exactly knew how to grab the footage within engine and the gameplay to make the trailer. But most of the game just doesn't know that. And if you hadn't do that in your life even once, uh, I, so then I wouldn't be sure that you can that you know how to do it. Like we are doing this for years, and we still feel that you know we are good in, not good enough in that because it's super hard part. I remember making trailers when one shot was repeated like hundred times uh, because of physics, because of lighting, because of bugs, because of I don't know how the people, how the gameplay capture artists felt that day, right? So many factors, and um, and yeah, how how much of the gameplay is faked? Like ninety nine percent. I mean, sometimes we make this. A unique shot by accident and it stays in the trailer because nobody knows how to repeat it and yeah there, those are the cases are very rare cases we cannot update it because nobody knows how to do it again how to make it again but yeah most is like kind of uh staged not faked yeah right i think that Eric said that but staged not faked and uh the other way uh is using the game repository where you can actually stage game in a more um precise way uh it's not a fake uh but rarely you have access to the game repository and rarely you have uh time for you to use it you have to arrange that uh, much earlier if you are sure that your game will be problematic during the gameplay capture start with Start about start talking about game repository access for your for your gameplay creator for your gameplay trailer creator as soon as possible because the later you are in the process it's harder to get to know the repository you are running out of time and in the end you provide the repository nobody knows how to handle it and it's too late for anything so if you really have these glimpses that that might be problematic we might not be able to provide you some cheats or like teleportation or something maybe it would be easier to work within the game repository think about it very fast like consider it super super fast the, the best games to capture for have a rewind function yeah <laughs> i made i made trailers for viewfinder it's a puzzle game so you, they let you rewind whenever and the best thing ever i'm trying to move the camera a certain way oh crap rewind you try again oh crap rewind or I did um, a trailer for Tacoma, same thing. Um, Quadrilateral Cowboy, that was one of the best capture experiences ever because basically that game is about programming things to happen at a certain time in you know, a certain rate. And you could even like cue yourself with little beeps, but that's the exception. And Splunky too, they had a, like a replay demo sort of feature. So mm -hmm. if I played through a level, I could just press a certain debug combination and it would start replaying exactly what I did 
um, but I could interrupt it at some point. So if I wanted to get to this one part of the level, but it was past this like really difficult section of the game, I could just hit replay and just like wait mm -hmm. and then hit stop and then resume the gameplay from that one moment. But that's also pretty rare. But that made doing the Splunky 2 trailers so much easier than it would have been, especially for a procedurally generated game. Yeah, it's uh, also, if you don't have this rewind function, then the uh, very often the, the, the autosave point, the checkpoints are very useful. Uh, if you are up to make a gameplay trailer with longer parts of like 10 to five, 15 seconds long parts of just you know, going in a one direction in first person perspective horror. Now I think about layers of fear, of course, of course then it's super cool to have those checkpoints. Because every every time you screw something up, you can just get back very soon and repeat the exercise instead of getting to the point where you screw up for like two minutes and then try again. So it's super useful tool for every gameplay edit uh, trailer editor and uh, gameplay trailer producer. And uh, yeah, the, the the more tools you provide, the better trailer will get, and the better the cooperation between dev and gameplay trailer creator will be. And I think, yeah, I know that's obvious, right? But not so obvious again. Thank you. So you, men you mentioned a lot of times marketing and also like the GDD that you wanted for to create a trailer and artists, but which roles on the dev side are usually involved in creating a trailer? Go oh, really? very often everybody. <laughs> Uh, it really, really depends on who has the time to do it. But I mean, usually there's some marketing person, it could be the community person. Um, and then maybe people like a creative director or artist will come in later on, or maybe an animation person if they need to do something custom. So it really depends. And I mean, sometimes during the feedback process, they'll just open it up to the whole studio and say, give us a bunch of feedback, which if, if, the, if the developer is going to do that, I recommend you ask them to consolidate and yes. sort of argue again amongst each other, then give us a list of things that you want changed because there's no way that we're gonna take a bunch of pages of feedback from all these different people and, and prioritize them because they could be contradictory yeah, information exactly. there. So try to make the feedback process as simple as possible, but it really, it really depends. Yeah, we are in instant contact always with the one person which represents the programmers because mostly it's like we need a new cheat we need a new hack we have this shot to repeat but we cannot uh, we don't know how so we contact the programmer can you just do this for us can you update the build can you can you can you do this and that's a very important person uh while making the uh uh while capturing the gameplay uh, on the other hand uh the feedback from the whole team is the worst nightmare a gameplay really editor can uh, like live through because sometimes yeah i know people are super ambitious super happy that they are making game together and they are you know deciding together very often about the game and uh, and usps and and the, those core features but it's good to have one or two people uh, um, um, responsible only for the trailer when you give a trailer to the whole team the feedback is contradictionary because the artist will look after something different than the coder, than the marketer, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And it's very good exactly to summarize it in one piece because it's not so obvious because sometimes devs are just giving us those pages. And this is horror because you have to pick up all those contradictionary things, then go to dev again, ask him what is important, what is what we just you know, delete and what we introduce into the uh, into the in the trailer. Uh, so I would say, of all the roles in on the dev side, everybody is important during the gameplay capture, and then editing. But not everybody should you know be a part of feedback process, because like the best situation is when you when you have when you hire um marketing people. Or a person who knows uh, what drives people in the trailers uh, and if you just cannot pay for that person go to their review page yeah, and, and base the feedback on on the his, uh, tips and tricks for for uh, uh, for game devs
Derek, do you have anything to add to that? Um, no, not really. <laughs> okay. Um, what common mistakes do you see in indie trailers or tra game trailers in general? Um, um, that's the funny part. Like, where are we going with this like forty seconds long intro depicting the world, or ten seconds of black and just the VO? Those are the the most common mistakes, uh, which which are not technical, the narrative ones. Uh, you don't want to watch this trailer to the end because it's boring from the beginning, uh, like the loco zoop in the beginning, uh, and yeah, the, those 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 narrative mistakes. Uh, but the worst one, I think, is the very badly captured gameplay. Well, again, gameplay is a king. Even if you have a good narrative, uh, you wrote the trailer in an interesting way, you capture the audience attention. You have this badly, badly light, bad, bad lighting, bad camera angles. Uh, you captured using uh, keyboard and mouse instead of uh, gamepad, um, and nobody understands what uh, what is going on in your game. What's going? What is what is it about? So that's the that's the biggest, the cardinal mistake you can make. Um, yeah, and personally, I don't recommend starting gameplay with those 2D animations. They are super cheap, I know. Uh, they might be interesting from your point of view, but we've seen them so many times, those 2D artworks mixed in kind of story that nobody cares. People basically fast forward them and want to watch, want to see the gameplay. Uh, yeah, that's 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 a thing from my side. I, yeah, I'd say also again, music that's very monotonous. That's yeah. a big mistake. No sound effects. That's a really big one. I've done wow. Twitch streams where people submit their game and there's no tr sound effects. They say, "Why are there no sound effects?" And a lot of times they just say, "Oh, I forgot to turn off music when I was capturing." And like, well, then mm -hmm. you go back and put the sound effects in. Yeah, <laughs> you put the sound effects in manually, recapture it, make sure yeah. the sound effects in. They're very important. Um, like. A, like one thing that probably you wouldn't think of is lots of cross dissolves. I see this in a lot of trailers. Every single cut has a cross dissolve, which is, I get it. I've I've been a person who got video editing software for the first time ever too. It's fun to put cross dissolves on everything, but that is just something that gets very repetitive and it's yeah. not very conducive to making a good trailer. Lots of dips to black also, which yep. I mean, I do that. I do that sometimes too, but like don't make them every single trailer, every single transition. And I think some people have told me they do that because it makes it smoother, but it doesn't just make sure you have, uh, you know, good, good, clear capture. And there's so many yeah. more things you can do with a hard cut than a cross dissolve or a dip to black. Yep. Um, you know, no, no, no call to action at the end. That's a big one or too many calls to action too many title screen things at the end, they look like the title comes up, then the, then something else, then wish list. just put it all on, on one thing because it's a miracle people get, make it to the end of your trailer yeah. if you're unknown. I mean, just look at that YouTube retention graph. It doesn't go like this, you know, mm -hmm. it goes like, goes like this probably. So make sure that all that information is there as soon as possible. Um, if you're putting text on the trailer, make sure it's, if you're gonna put text, you wanna make sure it's not just like white text with a black stroke in Times New Roman that makes your trailer look really cheap uh, because it doesn't match your game's style. I mean, maybe it does, but most of the time it doesn't. And that kind of brings down the production value like really, really easily. If you just have yeah. this sort of text, especially if like your logo is like just yeah. white text and very, looks like you just put a font, you just typed it out. Um, those, are, those are a bunch of big ones. Yeah, and there's one thing we forgot. I think we forgot about one thing uh, which you mentioned uh, a while ago, uh, the sound. Like the sound and the music and the SFX from the game, they're like 50% of your story. Like they're super important. It's not like sound is like 20%. No, it's it's the same language as the visuals. And at Radical, we always say that it's 50-50. If uh, even in prototypes we we try to include as many sound uh, sound design as much sound design and some, as many effects as possible, because it's it it makes trailer more more like alive, fleshed out. I don't know. It's for, for me it's super important. 
And I always think about trailers like about dance between visuals and the audios. So it's a dance, it's a ballet. And um, yeah, I think that that was one of our bullet points. We just forgot about it. And, and yeah, whenever I see and I, and I don't hear, I'm super bored very quickly. And my brain is starting to, it's natural that brain is starting to adding the sound design to your uh, silent, uh, the silent video. And uh, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a common mistake. People think that sound isn't important. Maybe it's because most of us kind of deaf. Uh, whenever I talk to, to musicians and to the composers, they hear the things that not, nobody hear, nobody hear. And if you, think, if you think sound isn't important, talk to your sound designer. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, if you're not going to have sound, you better have just a killer music track. It better be yeah. like Skate Story, which even that had sound effects in it too, but really nice music cue. Octodad, Bug Snacks, you know, those are great uh, on their own. They, they yeah. kind of telling you about the game, but it, sound is, it's texture, it's genre, it's game feel, it's informing gameplay in ways that other things don't. You know, what is it gonna feel like when I interact with this door or I move this lever over? And it's really important and, and it adds really, uh, good opportunities for like editing punctuation in the trailer, but that, that's a little bit more advanced. Yeah, that's that's the best way. Also, if you have a game which is very rich in the prompts and text, usually RPG game, and you have a trailer in which you depict something happening in the upper right corner, and there is a, this UI interface coming, and it's super important for some reason, you can signal it by adding the sound effect which indicates that there is something so you instantly look at, to this point so it's super important also as a kind of um, uh, uh, road sign uh, where to look and what to expect and what to look for and and using music and sound design all together as a like, punctuation uh, i think that's the golden grail of every editor uh, trailers like uh, making sound design working uh, like dancing with the music but that's like yeah that's a that's a higher top tier league of editing so for top tier what are your recommendations uh of one of your favorite game trailers of all time i made a list i'll just go through really, really quickly but usually i tell people the assassin's creed brotherhood multiplayer trailer still one of my top favorites of all time for indies ape out super duper tight you used to be able to play that as a demo like they, it was a playable trailer uh that was really really good i love the spirit fairer launch trailer amazing um the snow runner united we drive trailer which rips off or it parodies the, the death stranding super amazing it starts as a parody but like ends as just this really heartfelt uh trailer about like trucking um i really like the carto trailer which it's a really good mix of narrative and gameplay all in the same voiceover that's always the one i go to when i'm saying like look have a voiceover that sounds like a story but also is telling you about the gameplay um and i really like the papers please trailer it's really really good really nice dramatic arc there and the Stanley Parable Raphael trailer is amazing. It's just reading. I don't even know if it's real, but it's supposed to be them, the narrator of the game, sarcastically reading this review about the Stanley Parable. And just it's perfect. Yeah, I have this one example which still sits in my mind since like 2022. It's Bloody Hell Hotel gameplay reveal tra trailer, which is like perfect. It's like 10 out of 10 or even 11 out of 10. I think that the game wasn't very much ready back then, but the, behind the game is uh, one person and maybe a few like um, outsourcer, I don't know, but this one person staged probably with the game repository and sold every single USB, the whole core loop in 90 seconds in such an interesting way that you are thinking that you were watching another trailer for, um, for the cartoon animation uh, or, um, like our movie but still at the same time the trailer is selling how you actually play what you do in this game it introduces the variety of characters and the variety of 
of uh, locations uh, in the world of the game. And that's the like that and the skate that 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 skate game we are talking about. That's the second one. Uh, but the bloody hell hotel is with me, and I'm like thinking constantly every time I have a we have a new project at Radical. I'm like, let's do something as perfect as this one. Like 11 out of 10. There is every single thing which is in the trailer is super important. There is nothing you can just take away. Is that, that yeah, that's the one. And it's basically indie game trailer because there's like one person behind that game. That's the uh, game from the author of uh, Dark or Dark Who game. And he made uh, Dark Who on his own. And yeah, and I think Bloody, Hotel, Bloody Hell Hotel is also made by his own, on his own. Wow, thank you so much. So everyone at home has something to watch now. Um, before we end this XP boost, um, I would like to bring in two questions from uh, the audience. One is, do you have any tips or experiences in doing trailer for VR or AR? Is there anything you do immensely different from normal game trailers? Make mm. sure you can stabilize your footage in some way. Ideally, through the headset Oculus Now, there is an ability that you can turn on to stabilize the footage that you capture from there. It adds these like black bars when you move your head really quickly, but it's so much better. Some PC games, you know, talk to your programmer, make it so then that you can stabilize the, the footage because you just don't want people to throw up when they watch a trailer. Um, and the other thing is like really think of it as like a performance because you have the, your hands here and it, your hands can be very expressive the way that they move. So really try to really choreograph the movements and make it all very clear, um, you know, both with what you're looking at, what your hands are doing, and, you know, make sure that people understand that this is a VR game that has to be VR. It can't just be a VR version of some other game. There has to be something in there. It's like, oh, this could only happen in VR. And that's, a, I think, another really important thing. But mostly just make sure people don't throw up when they watch a trailer. Yeah, totally agree. Uh, when we started working with VR games, it was our first concern how to stabilize the footage. And in the beginning, we were making this artificially until the proper tools came in. But also, if you have a, a little, a tiny budget, a little money, and you have a friend with the camera, so if you have these unique things like uh, the spells using the gestures or fighting using the gestures, you can try and depict it as a live action trailer, just putting a friend with the goggles there and, and showing how you actually, what you actually do and how you move, because that might be the unique selling point of your game. So that's worthy of consideration. It's a tricky part, but still. So, um... The other question is, in terms of viewer retention, do you see trailer design changing further to adjust to current attention spans? Yeah, I think so. I think that's where the cold open came from, for example. Um, that's why we try to show the gameplay as soon as possible. That's why we try to sell the genre like in the first five seconds. And I think that like 12 years ago, we had a longer time span of attention i think we could uh, make some bigger introductions to the trailer like that's where the uh, those landscapes and camera flies came from back then now we try to avoid as much as possible and i think it will be only worse kind of because we change especially in the times of tiktok and the youtube reels or facebook reels i don't remember where you are just showing if everything's super fast, you're selling the ideas super fast, the instructions super fast. So yeah, I think it's it will uh, change in very fast. It's, it's changing very fast. Yeah, I think it, it will change, but there will still be fundamentals that apply because this is still something that you're making to show to another person. And there, you know, good pacing can be applied to things across all media, you know, movies, TV shows, you know, a magic act, a stand-up comedy act, because you're fundamentally, we're still just trying to hold a person's attention. So it's still going to have 
the structure of like, you know, this is the thing to catch your attention. This is the thing to keep you invested. And this is the thing to turn your expectations on their heads so then that you keep watching and as things go along. But I mean, people say, oh, TikTok and everything has ruined our attention span. If you go back to some other like old TV shows, they did basically the same sort of thing. Like you, if you watch Murder, She Wrote, they have a little summary of the whole thing or Columbo at the very beginning. Mm. You see like the whole thing is before this 90 minute episode or like 60 minutes, like we're not, where's it like as far as from TikTok audience as possible is like investigative journalism. They have a little teaser at the beginning that says these are the three stories that we're going to talk yeah. about today on 60 minutes. So it's probably going to change a little bit, but ultimately still will have the same foundational rules for holding people's attention. Yeah, I agree. I think the structure stays, but we are just want to, want to watch the uh, the cuts much faster. I think uh, I know some people that who are watching YouTube movies and YouTube uh, trailers on the uh, twice the speed that was originally intended, and I'm like, wow! And they like I cannot watch it uh, slower. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. That's Heart what aches. we are. That's what we are facing. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm, I'm very sure everyone who watched is much smarter now. Um, one last thing: Do you um, can you recommend any resources, Derek? I know that you write resources where uh, our viewers can actually um, get further into um, making a trailer for their game, so that they can. Uh, not only use the talk we had here, but also more resources where, where, where they could lean on. For me, go to gametraileredditor.com and that's my website, I think. It's a forwarding address. Um, and I have my YouTube channel, just look up Derek Clue, and I have a whole bunch of videos there. I have my talks there. Um, I also, I'm on TikTok mostly nowadays because it's so easy to make TikTok videos as opposed to YouTube. And I have my weekly newsletter, uh, well, bi-weekly now. Um, that you can subscribe to from my website. And I also have an online course, which you can go to on my website. Um, so plenty to keep you busy, even without paying anything. Yeah, I think it's pointless to duplicate the work that Derek uh, already done for the um, indie games industry and maybe even the games industry uh, uh, as a whole. And yeah, we also have the connection at Radical to Derek's uh, Discord. We also use uh, his resources from time to time. And I think duplicating this is totally pointless. So yeah, I, I don't have anything just to, I'm telling you to go to this guy websites. I don't think it's pointless. I want to read someone else's material. Yeah, I know that you won't, but it's super hard, you know, to not duplicate you and at the same Let's time do it. Write something new. Yeah. Okay. I have a, I, I have this audience on this part of the internet. You might have an audience on this part of the internet. So just do it. <laughs> it's super hard. Yeah, we'll think about it. Do you Maybe. know how many people make videos about how to season the cast iron uh, skillet mm. on YouTube? <laughs> it's tempting, right? It's super tempting, <laughs> but I also know how much time is spent on it. And yeah, there's a lot it's of like time. Hundreds of hours right now, right? I can't Probably. even imagine. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, again, thank you so, so much um, for being here, for answering all our questions. Um, yeah. All I can say is, uh, I, I couldn't say good evening to every one of you because I know uh, it's uh, Derek's place, it's rather midday. Um, but yes, uh, thank you. And uh, for, to all the viewers, thank you for watching. Um, I hope we'll see each other soon at the next, uh, at the next the Game City event. And yeah, all I, that's left to say is goodbye. Thank you. Thank you.